Okay, so this is uh, like a brief uh, agenda for today. So we'll start by defining the problem of object segmentation. And then we're going to see uh, like two uh, different uh, problems within this area that are called uh, semantic segmentation and instant segmentation. And we're going to see solutions for the two problems, okay? So here, instead of talking about the uh, generic instant segmentation problem, where the goal is to group pixels into regions that are, uh, share some properties like color or texture, the goal is to uh, group regions into uh, group pixels into regions that are related to the objects that we see in the scene. Okay, so the, so in fact there are two goals here. We want to do uh, an accurate localization and also recognition. We want to recognize which is the class, which is the category of the object. Right. So here, uh, the, this uh, object segmentation has several applications. Here are some of them, like uh, image editing and composition, robotics, or autonomous, uh, autonomous driving, or medical image analysis. I'm going to talk about this application later. Uh, so, uh, as I said, we can group uh, methods into two different tasks. One is called semantic segmentation, where the goal is to uh, assign a, a label to each pixel. That it's, this label is related to the category, to the class of, of, of the pixel. But here we do not differentiate between different instances of the same class. So for instance, here, uh, all, uh, these two persons got the same label, okay? Uh, as opposed to this, the other problem is called instant segmentation, and here, uh, the goal is also to, uh, to label each pixel, but uh, here the labels are class aware and also instance aware. So for instance, here we have different labels for all the different persons, different labels for the different chairs, okay? So we're going to see uh, solutions for these two uh, different problems, okay? Uh, first of all, the very briefly, let's review uh, data sets and benchmarks that are usually uh, used for, for test your, your methods in these two tasks, where one is the known uh, Pascal uh, visual object uh, classes that contains 20 categories and uh, ground truth for the two tasks for semantic and instant segmentation. Then Pascal context which is an extension of the previous one more, more categories and also labels for the two problems. Another one is uh, Coco and many other data sets. We're going to see some examples from all this. Okay. So okay, let's start uh, first with the problem of uh, semantic segmentation. And here, in fact, we can use a uh, net that uh, we already know how to train. That is a net that is trained for image uh, classification. We can consider, for instance, a pixel, then get an extracted patch around the pixel, and then uh, pass around this path through uh, the net that is trained for image classification, and we get a label for the class, for the pixel. Okay. So then if we repeat this process for all the pixels, we get a segmentation map like that. Of course, this is very inefficient, so let's try to do it in a better way. And the way to do that is very simple is just to convert what we already know, a net that is uh, trained for uh, image classification into a net that is fully convolutional. What's the meaning of that? So here we have a, an, a, an example of a net like AlexNet that is used for image classification. Here we have several convolutional layers, pulling non-linear non activations, and then uh, pulling layers. At, usually at the end we have several fully connected layers. That is layers where each neuron is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer. Okay? So the first thing that we, the, the, the only thing that we need to do here is to convert this into all convolutions, all layers with convolutions and pulling operations. And in fact this is just a different way of uh, understanding this, these layers because in fact a fully connected layer can be understood as a convolutional layer with a filter where the size of the filter matches the size of the last, uh, the output of the previous layer, okay? So in that way, we can just uh, see the, this, la this uh, layer, this, all these convolutional, all these fully connected layers can be understood as, as convolutional layers. So in this way, instead of being constrained to import uh, an image of fixed size, we can import an image of any size, and then the output is going to be a map of predictions like that. Okay, so we're going to have predictions for several pixels at the same time. So that's the basic idea, to go from a, a, a usual net to a fully convolutional net. So that's the first step. That's the, the idea that was proposed here by Long and, and in, this, in this paper, right? So now we have then a fully convolutional uh, uh, network with all the convolutional and pooling layers. Uh, there are a few little changes that we need to do. For if you are using a net that is trained for ImageNet, then we need to change the last layer because we need to 
uh, we are going to predict uh, less classes. In the case of Pascal, we have 20 classes per plus background, so 21 classes. So we have to replace the last layer by uh, one by one convolution with the number of channels equal to the number of classes. Another change that we need to do is to use a pixel-wise loss function because we want to make predictions for all the pixels. Okay. So in that way, uh, we can input an image of any size. I'm going to get us output a map of predictions for all the classes, in this case, in, in Pascal. However, there are two problems here. One we can see here is that the output is usually smaller than the input. Okay? Uh, this is because we are using pooling operations here in the middle. And the other problem is that the output is very coarse. We're going to see solutions for these two problems. So the first thing, as I said, the, the output is smaller, though, so this can be uh, fixed by upsampling the predictions, and this is the solution that was proposed here. Uh, we can upsample these predictions using, for instance, uh, bilinear interpolation, that is uh, a convolution with uh, fixed filters, but a better idea is to use learnable upsampling, and this is what was proposed here too. Okay? And in fact, this idea of uh, learnable upsampling has been uh, used in the literature with many different names. Uh, in some cases, it's called uh, deconvolution. Uh, sometimes it's called transpose convolution and also uh, fractional, uh, com fractional stride deconvolution or, or convolutions with fractional stride. And in fact, they are uh, talking about more or less the same thing. And the name, just to, to understand a little bit what, what's, what's going on here, uh, the name of transpose convolution comes because we can uh, a, uh, implement a convolution as a matrix operation. If we uh, vectorize the input and we write in form of matrix the weight of the of the of the weight of the of the kernel, then the convolution can be performed as a product of these two matrices. Okay. So in that case, the up, the upsampling operation that we want to do can be thought of uh, can be understood as a product with a transposed. Uh, matrix. That's why uh, they use this name of transpose convolution. But in fact, as I said, this transpose convolution can also be implemented as a usual convolution if we use a uh, fractional stride or what's the same if we add zeros within samples and then we perform a usual convolution. And here we have a very simple example showing that these two operations are really the same thing. Here, this is an example in 1D. So here we have, uh, in this case, a one, one dimensional convolution with stride two. That what, what this stride two downsamples the, x, the input x into the output y. And here we see how to perform the upsampling using this idea of this transpose convolution. So we use the transpose matrix here to go from the small uh, signal x to the larger one y. And the same operation can be performed with a usual convolution with stride uh, one half, that is adding zeros within samples. And if you look at the operations, they are doing exactly the same thing, maybe with the with a, with a weight in a different order, but since the weights are learned, the two things are equivalent. Okay? Um, so that's the way to do this this idea of the upsampling, uh, upsampling operation that in the case of the long net is done at the end with the, with the predictions, right? Then there are other uh, proposals uh, in order to perform this upsampling operation. So for instance here, this model is called become net. And here they propose to use uh, at the beginning the, the usual convolution uh, path with the normal DGG. And then instead of using one big upsampling at the end, they propose several small upsampling operations, so they have like a symmetric net. Okay, so this is what was proposed in ICCB in 2015. So this solves the first problem, that is the, the idea of the output has to be the same size as uh, uh, the input. Then we have another problem, that is that the, uh, the predictions uh, may be caused. And this happens because we are making predictions using, using the features obtained at the final layers where, they have, where we have uh, global uh, and, and cost representation. Okay, so the idea is to try to uh, improve the details by adding information extracted from the first uh, layers in the net that are the that uh, features related to local information. Right. So this was the solution proposed in in in, in the model by Long. 
Uh, so the idea is to combine predictions obtained at the final layer with predictions made using feature maps extracted from previous layers. So in this case, they use these connections that are called the skip connections. Uh, they, uh, given the feature maps at each layer, they make predictions, upsample the predictions, and then they just sum the predictions in, into the final output. And so here we can see the, the complete model. In this case, they use just three skip connections. And here we can see the results without skips, with one skip connection and with two skip connections. And so you can see as, as we add more, this, more, more of these connections, we get more details in, in the final result. Okay? Here, you, you can see here more, no, before that, uh, I have, I'm going to show you some results, but before that, a few details about how they train the net. Uh, they, they, they try with different classical models, with AlexNet, with VGG, and, and with Google Net. And they, uh, so they remove the last layer, they add this one by one by 21 uh, uh, filter layer at the end. They use this uh, um, upsampling of the predictions and the skip connections. And uh, the, after several experiments, they got that the best results were obtained with the VGG and with these three connections, with the, this, the, the final predictions plus these two skin connections. Uh, and here you can see uh, results for the Pascal test set in terms of the, the typical metric, which is the mean intersection over the union. In fact, this is the metric that maybe is not the best one to, uh, to understand the, the improvement that we get. It's more a visual. Uh, improvement that the metric uh, does not take into account because it just counts uh, the number of pixels. It's intersection of unit, right? Okay, so here we have some more results for this for this uh, uh, model. Okay, and so uh, since then, uh, many other models have been proposed that follow more or less the same part, the same the same architecture. That is, uh, downsampling path that extracts the the cost features, that is convolutions uh, and pooling and downsampling operations, and then an upsampling path that recovers uh, the, the image resolution, and then some skip connections in order to add uh, these fine details uh, to the output. In some cases, there are also some post-processing, uh, uh, that is an optional module, that the idea is to refine the predictions, and here people tend usually use uh, graphical models like uh, compound random fields. Here you can see many, some, some of the models uh, that are improvements over this basic approach. We're going to see just very briefly a few of them. So one of these is the UNET. I'm going to see them again later when we talk about the image, uh, medical image segmentation. It was a model that was proposed for the segmentation of, of uh, cell uh, microscope images. And it is, uh, the idea is, it has, the name is because it has this U shape, it's like a symmetric net, where we have, again, a downsampling path, uh, where uh, we have several convolutions and then a pooling operation. At each pooling, they double the number of filters, and then the upsampling path where they have the number of filters in each, uh, at each level. And then they have these skip connections between corresponding resolution levels. Okay, so that's, that's the idea of this net. We're going to see examples of this later. Then another approach was this, this idea of fully convolutional dense nets. The idea here is to, again, is, is based on this U net that we saw before, plus uh, another model that was proposed for image classification that is called dense net. Uh, so the idea here is we have a U net with this downsampling path, uh, upsampling path, some skip connections, and this green modules there that are called dense block that contain uh, connections between all the layers. So the idea of this model, the main idea of this model is to alleviate the vanishing gradient problem and to uh, encourage the reuse of the features. Okay? It's a very, very nice model. And then finally, another solution that was proposed uh, instead of using this sequence of pooling operations and then they need to do this upsampling and the skip connection, the idea here is to replace usual convolutions but by these uh, dilated convolutions. And the idea here is that uh, the, in these dilated convolutions, all the filters have the same number of weights, the same number of elements, but they are applying a different way so their receptive field increases exponentially uh, with the size of the convolution, but uh, we don't, so the, we don't increase the number of parameters, but we increase the receptive field, and uh, we have information, more contextual information without needing of these pooling operations, okay? So that's, that's all for the first problem, for the instance uh, segmentation, for the, uh, sorry, semantic segmentation problem. 
And then very briefly for, for the other task, the instance segmentation, remember that the goal here is to uh, label each, each, each pixel and also uh, taking into account the, the different instances of the same uh, class. And here for this problem, basically all the solutions are based on the solutions proposed uh, for the object detection task. That is all the solutions that you saw yesterday for object detection. So there was one proposal for the RCNN that was as inefficient as the RCNN. And there was this other one that is called multitask cascade. So the, it's based on the faster RCNN. And the idea here is to use three different layers, a, a cascade of nets. Uh, each net is trained for one different uh, task. So th they have first the uh, first network for region proposals. Uh, the, the important thing here is that the three nets share the same feature maps that are computed before. So they, f they have one network for region proposals. Then they, uh, the output of these region proposals and the feature maps are used for the second net that is used for the, uh, for the prediction of the masks. And then the outputs of the, the output of these layers of the mass predictions, the bounding boxes, and the feature maps are the input to the third net that produces the object classes. Okay, and they are trained uh, together. So they they they, uh, they train this end to end. And with this model, they won uh, the Coco uh, Challenge competition in 2015. Okay, and then. Uh, so here we have very, very nice results from this, uh, this model, the multitask uh, cascades. And finally, the last one this is called the mask RCNN. It's a very recent model. It was proposed this year. And it is also an extension of the faster RCNN. Uh, um, but here, uh, it's like a more uh, simple extension in the sense that they, add, uh, they have the network for the prediction of the classes and the bounding boxes, and they add in parallel a network, a small network that is applied to each region proposal that is used to uh, predict the, the masks. And there, there's another improvement over the basic model. That's this, this step that is called ROI alignment. And the difference, is he, the difference here is that in the previous version, they used the ROI pooling because they, didn't, they wanted just to localize objects, so they didn't need the, to do uh, to extract uh, very accurate contours of the objects. So here they use a different approach. Instead of quantizing, here they use a bilinear interpolation in, in the regions. And then uh, they have this uh, separate net that is trained for the, for the mask prediction. Okay, so in this case, they have a loss function that is a combination of losses for the t three tasks, one for the classifier, uh, one for the boxes and, and the other one for the max. And this is trained end to end. And the other difference is that, uh, one important thing is that the output of this uh, net that is trained for predicting the mask, uh, out predict, 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 uh, predicts uh, C different uh, mask, that is one max mask for each of the C classes. Okay, so this is uh, also a difference from the previous model. And here you can see, uh, some some results uh, for this uh, mask uh, CNN, we, and we can compare the uh, results of this uh, model with the previous one. So M and C, there is the previous one, the the multitask uh, uh, cascade that was the winner of Coco in 2015, and the other one, the, which was the winner in, in the next year. You can see that with this model, they they improve the results over these two previous uh, approaches. Well, and, and that's it. So we have seen uh, different models for the semantic segmentation problem, and then other ones for instance segmentation. All the models that we discussed here were based on the models proposed for object segmentation. There are other proposals. We don't have time to discuss them. For instance, some models that are based on recurrent uh, uh, neural nets. Okay. So that's it. I don't know if we have time maybe for 